I had the opportunity to get to know Chef a few years ago when I was a stagiaire in his restaurant, a very ineffective one, peeling garlic, but to say we were all in for a super amazing treat today would be a serious understatement. Uh, raised in both Bombay and Goa, Chef Cardoz attended culinary school in Bombay, spending time in the, kitchen, time in the kitchens of the Thaj Hotel and also at Le Roche in Switzerland. He eventually moved to New York, where he worked with his mentor, Gray Kunz, at New York's Les Penas, rising from chef de partie to executive sous chef over the five years that he was there. Floyd went on to open Thabla with Danny Meyer in 1998. Um, as executive chef at Thabla, he introduced diners to his groundbreaking new Indian cuisine, where he incorporated Indian ingredients with Western techniques. Thabla has, as you all probably know, received numerous media accolades, including three stars from the New York Times, and in addition, Floyd was named as one of the innovators in Bon Appetit's 2003 annual restaurant edition and has received three nominations by the James Beard Foundation for Best Chef in New York. Floyd re released his first cookbook, One Spice, Two Spice, which hopefully some of you have gotten uh, in 2006. It includes his favorite new Indian recipes from Thabla, including one of my favorites, the crab cakes, <laughs> and demystifies Indian food and flavors and teaches how to expertly add Indian spices to American cuisine. Um, I ask you all to join me in welcoming Chef Cardoz. And as two quick reminders, to the extent that you can close your laptops, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions at the end of the session, please use the mics because we are recording for YouTube. Thanks so much. Welcome, Chef. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. And thank you for being here. Um, what she didn't say was, I initially thought that I was going to go into the sciences, and I was doing my master's in biochemistry when I got, had this moment in the lab one day that this is not something that I want to do. I enjoy food. I enjoy cooking. And as a kid, I used to always cook in the kitchen with my cook at home. For those of you Indian families, you know that men don't cook in India. You have someone do it for you. And I used to hang out in the kitchen, and you know my way of eating extra was hanging out with the cook in the kitchen, so she would feed me you know, before my brothers and sisters, and then when I went to the dinner table, I got some more. But I enjoyed eating so much that I started cooking from the age of nine. I used to make omelets and stuff, and I used to do these barbecues in India, uh, you know, with my friends. And I realized that I absolutely love doing this, and I have not regretted one single day my cooking, because I get up every morning and I want to go to work. Uh, on the weekends when I'm home, I don't work weekends, I work Saturday, Sunday, I'm off. I, I'm up early in the morning. I plan my menu for the day. Uh, I know we're going to have three meals at home. Drives my wife absolutely crazy because I start cooking at 7 in the morning. Uh, I go shopping with my kids. I buy whatever's available. And it's, 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 it's about passion for me. It's about doing what I love to do every single day. And uh, what I do at the restaurant at Tabla is that I try to bring these flavors that I grew up with in India uh, when I came here 22 years ago. Um, Indian food in the United States was very bad. Uh, there was a few restaurants on 6th Street, a few restaurants on Lexington Avenue, and they did an adaptation of Indian food that was found only in Mughal cuisine, and it had cream and butter, and I didn't grow up that way. So when I was approached to do this restaurant, to do Indian food, I said, you know what, I'm going to do Indian food, but I'm going to do my take on Indian food because most people in the United States don't know the kind of food that I grew up with. And if you're Indian, you know that the food you eat at home is nothing like what you find in restaurants. It's seasonal, it's light, it's fresh, it's absolutely delicious. So we opened Tabla, I opened upstairs, I did my take, which is French. I was classically trained in French food, so it's French and Indian mix. And, and the bread bar, which is the lowest street level restaurant, was a space we had, which first I wanted to prove to the United States that I could cook. So. I concentrated on that restaurant, and my partner would tell me, let's do this here, let's do this. And I was just doing stuff that I didn't really care about. And then two years into the restaurant, I spoke to Danny, my partner, and I said, Danny, listen, let's change this. I always say when I retire, I want to do homestyle Indian food. So in the bread bar, we do homestyle Indian food, which is not really uh, Indian food that all Indians in India eat, but it's also food that Indians in the United States and England and Australia, what we cook with the local ingredients. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit, just a bit of an adaptation. Okay, the lamb that I'm doing today, and I think you're going to have it at lunch, is uh, a spice crusted lamb. Uh, in India, when you do lamb, it's always killed. You know, it's not cooked medium rare. Uh, being that in India, the meat we use is not aged and it's 
killed and cooked right away. So it's stewed. So I have adapted the spices from the lamb that I, you know, in India you always cook lamb with black pepper, with, with green cardamom, with mustard, with black cardamom. And what I've done is I've taken a nice cut of lamb, like a lamb chop or a lamb loin or, or, or leg of lamb, I've treated it with spice, and we're going to make a little marinade today for the lamb. And we've taken lamb loin, and we're using uh, mustard seeds, black pepper, and my recipe called for, group, for black cardamom, but they didn't have any, so we have green cardamom. Uh, and you know what I think is if you use, use spices, it adds flavor to the dish, and it makes it exciting. It just doesn't you know, keep it one-dimensional. Yeah, lamb is great. You have a nice lamb chop, put it on the grill, and roast it. It's, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you can add some flavor to it and make it more exciting, why not? So we, we there is, you know, when anybody comes into my restaurant and says, oh, I don't like spices, first thing out of my mind is SOL because everything across the board has got spices in it. You know, we can do a piece of fish or a piece of meat, but our sauces are pre-made, our vegetables are, are cut. Us. So, but in India, uh, you know, we have, I think, over a billion people. And the reason why our population is so big is because of the spices, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's good for you. It, it keeps, keeps you in good health. And now that we're eating more like the Western world in India, we're having more of the disease and all the other, you know, rich men's diseases coming to India. So we're going to make a spice, uh, a spice rub. And uh, you know, what I do at home is I never buy ground spices. We buy whole spices. I have two little, little coffee grinders at home. And in my kitchen at the restaurant, everybody has to have a, a spice grinder because we make our spice mixes to, you know, fresh every single day. So we're going to grind that in. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of oil, rosemary, and salt, and we're going to crush the, the lamb. And uh, what, I, what I like to do is I, I live in the burbs, so it's easy for me to grill stuff at home. So I have a grill in the backyard, and I like grilling it. But if you don't have a grill, you can put it in a pan and cook it in a pan, or you can even put it in the oven and under the broiler. Uh, when I was deciding that I was going to do this lamb, I said, you know, let's, let's do something else with it that will go with it. Now, most, most people here love chickpeas. And, and, the, and this dish of chickpeas is actually quite um, close to the original that I'm making. OK, so we're going to do chickpeas, and we're going to do cracked wheat. Again, all really healthy, good ingredients. So is that done? So we're also going to use rosemary with the lamb. Now, in Indian food, uh, rosemary is not very often used. But I believe that uh, when I take Indian cuisine, which is a great cuisine, and I take French cuisine, or German, or Italian, uh, or Chinese, or Japanese, for that matter, I stay with, with the traditions. Now, you always do leg of lamb with rosemary. And that kind of works very well. Like I do duck at the restaurant. I do the orange. Uh, I make an orange curry. There is no orange curry in India. But I use orange juice, and I use spices that work with orange. I don't know, like I use star anise, I use fennel seed, I use ginger. So we have the spice. Is, is the rosemary in there yet? No. And uh, I'm going to add rosemary to it. And whenever you do spur herbs, it's always great to you know, mince the herbs up right at the end and not in the morning or the day before, because it kind of loses all the aromatic oils. And we're going to add a little bit of oil to that and salt. And salt is good for you. So you know, if your doctor says don't use salt, they don't know anything about flavor. Now, the black pepper in there adds, adds a little bit of heat to it. And what I love about black pepper is that it, it has this, this constant flavor, unlike like chili peppers, which keep on building. So when you add black pepper, you can add as little or as much as you want. Uh, and the great thing about black pepper, too, is it's a great digestive. Uh, black pepper is used a lot in the south of India. And also, it's, it's good uh, because it, it, helps, it helps in digestion, too. So we have the lamb. Yeah. I love using my hands when I cook because you know what I need. And once you marinate the lamb, 
and let it sit. You should let it sit in the fridge overnight. I think if you let spices sit on a piece of meat, it, it tends to uh, you know, permeate the meat. And in India, if, if you have a lesser cut of meat, say you use a piece of leg and it's not as tender as a tenderloin or, a, or say a ribeye, uh, you want to let it sit a little because it helps tenderize the meat a little bit. Okay. In India, we use other tenderizing agents like lime juice and tamarind and uh, uh, green papaya. But with the meat we get here in the United States, you don't really need to do that. So once this is marinating and we have some, we marinated it earlier, we're going to start searing it off. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sauce to go with the lamb. Uh, and uh, I use a shallots, garlic, ginger. Uh, I use tomatoes and mint. Now again, mint is very, very traditional with lamb. And again, who am I to say I'm not going to put mint in? If it's worked for so many hundreds of years, I'm just going to keep it, and I'm going to change it. I like to innovate a little bit. So with this sauce, you're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And I'm going to do shallots, garlic, and ginger in there. And basically, I'm going to sweat it out a little bit. And and when you sweat stuff out, you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to release the essential oils. Uh, most flavoring agents in food are from the essential oils. And, and again, I, I, I mentioned earlier about, about the spices being freshly ground. You want freshly ground because there are spices uh, have these essential oils in them. And if you buy a mix from your local grocery store of, say, cumin or coriander or black pepper, you don't know when this has been ground. It could be from 10 years ago. Uh, and it, it's, it, you could be just going into your backyard, picking up some dirt and throwing it in the pan because that's what it tastes like, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm a big snob as far as spices go because I do feel that if you are going to use these great flavorings, why not use them at their prime? You know, why, why half-ass it? Because you don't really need to do that. Okay, and uh, we, we we as chefs, we like to, like you tech people, we like to have multiple screens working at one time. With us chefs, as we have multiple tasks going on in the kitchen. You know, that's our multiple windows, if you will, because if we try to do one thing at a time, and you have eight hours to get your lunch shift ready, there's no way the restaurant's gonna open. So if right now I'm making the lamb sauce, at the same time I'm gonna start cooking the chickpeas and the cracked wheat. So um, for the cracked wheat, we have it's, it's regular bulgur wheat, and um, I think this is really a healthy thing to eat. Uh, we have clove, we have cinnamon, we have turmeric, ginger, and shallots, and onions or shallots. And um, I like to use clove and cinnamon. Actually, uh, there's a story I have. I used to work at the St. Regis uh, about 10 years ago, and there used to be a, um, a princess who used to live in, in the hotel, and she claimed she was a princess, uh, so we called her princess. Uh, and uh, she asked me to make an Indian style pilaf for her one day. I worked for this French restaurant, and she says, I love Indian food, make me a pilaf. So I, I got basmati rice, and I made her a nice pilaf. And I, in India, when you make pilaf, you always use clove and you use cinnamon because it has this aromatic flavor to it which adds to the rice. So I made the rice, I threw the cinnamon in, I threw the clove in, and we sent it up to a room. And in India, you know, when you use cinnamon, you want to put it in the dish so people can see that you're using good cinnamon. It's, it's, it's a way of showing off. So she sends the rice back down to the kitchen, and she says, you know, what are you doing, making dessert? I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, you got cinnamon in there. Nobody puts cinnamon in rice. But in India, we do that. You know, you add cinnamon because it makes it very aromatic. Uh, Indian food and Indian flavors is, is all about, uh, about the aromaticness of food. So I'm going to add a little bit of the spice into the shallots and ginger. And we're going to add the tomatoes. So yeah, Indian food is, is not only about heat. Indian food is a balance of sweet, sour, spicy, bitter, and about texture. Uh, whenever you eat a good Indian food, Indian meal, there'll always be something sweet, something hard, something crispy, something crunchy, something in between. And, and that's what makes Indian cuisine exciting. I mean, you could go for a dosa 
and you'll have a nice crispy pancake, you'll have a, a spicy you know, sambar, or like a coconut chutney. And what I do with my food is I try to bring this into everything we do because I give this all the time in my restaurant, so your food's very exciting. Uh, it's exciting because I'm using these tricks that we've been doing in India for hundreds of years using texture and flavor. So for the, uh, for the cracked wheat, and this is very easy, easy to make. Uh, I have the canola oil, and I'm going to add the whole spices in, in the dish. Now, I, I believe that if you use whole spices, you should add them in the beginning in hot oil because, A, these are oils in these spices, and the oil helps extract them. And you put the clove, the cinnamon, and if you have cumin, whole cumin, whole cumin works really, really well with this. So when you put it in the dish, I don't know, if you look at it, it starts, it starts kind of shimmering. And I don't know if you can see that. And, and that's when you know that you're extracting most of the flavors out of it. So I have onion and ginger. And I pretty much feel that if you're starting off anything, if you want to do a boiled vegetable at home, if you add a little bit of onion and ginger and chili and cumin, it makes it so much more exciting rather than having steamed broccoli or, or sauteed zucchini or sauteed asparagus. You know, asparagus is great, but if you add a little bit of mustard seeds, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of coconut, uh, a little bit of ginger or tamarind, it again adds layers of flavor is what you want to do. You want to build layers of flavor. So I'm going to cook that till transparent. Yeah. And then I'm going to add my cracked, oops, my cracked wheat in there. And I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric. And turmeric, besides giving that lovely yellow color, has a little bit of bitterness in there and has, has great flavor. And you always want to add just a tiny bit because there are a lot of things you can do with food if you add too much. If you add too much salt, you can add potatoes to a dish and, and kind of extract out the excess salt. If you add too much of chili, you can add a little bit of acid, yogurt, tomatoes, and you know make that a little tamer. But if you add too much turmeric, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> you, know, you have to either double or triple or quadruple the recipe or throw it out. I'm going to toast this a little bit and then add the stock to it. And that's good. And the great thing about this is if you if you are cooking at home and you are entertaining and you know, there's always tricks on what you can make before and what you can do. Now this is one of the things that you can make and if you have a low oven at home, just put it in a bowl and just take it in the oven at 180 degrees and it'll stay for up to two or three hours. Okay, uh, It's the same thing if you're making the chickpeas. You can do the same thing and, and hold it. So you let that come down and go, you know, really let it all cook. And then we're going to finish with a little bit of stock and the mint. So while this is cooking, I'm going to start with the chickpeas. And the chickpeas are, again, uh, it's an adaptation of, of Gujarati cuisine, um, which is on the west coast of India, next to Bon, north of Bombay. And, and the cuisine from Gujarat is, is very different from the rest of India, being that they use a little bit of sweetness in their cuisine. And, and that sweetness comes from the Persians who came, you know, the Parsis, they came to India a few hundreds of years ago, and when they came and they bought, they bought their cuisine in with them, and they always have a little bit of sweetness, a little of sourness in their food, and that has kind of been bought into everybody in India. So with the with the chickpeas, it's basically coconut that you can toast in the in the oven, and uh, I like sometimes to do it in a, in a saute pan 
on the fire. So it gets a little, you know, a little faster color. And then it's a roasted chili pepper. And this is, 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 uh, is, is typical from the west coast of India. But if you are a, a Mexican food you know, fan, they roast chili peppers in Mexico too. And it changes the flavor of the chili pepper. And what I'm doing is I'm using a fresh chili pepper. So what I take, when I take a fresh chili pepper, I just take it and hold it over the fire. And it, it gets a smoky uh, flavor that changes the, the, the entire texture of the dish. So what we have is we have coconut. We have a fresh roasted chili pepper. We have ginger. Uh, and we're going to puree that. And we're also going to add a spice of black pepper and coriander to it. So we're going to add stock to that, and we're going to let that, you know, it's, it's going to continue reducing. And this, this is actually really good for this time of the year because you get some amazing tomatoes in the green market. Uh, if you go down to Union Square Market, actually today, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, they have these farmers bringing the best tomatoes in the country, I think, in my opinion, are from New Jersey. Uh, the soil is great. You know, the weather's perfect, and they get these amazing tomatoes. And if you make a sauce like this, so you just take these tomatoes, slice them, and put a little bit of salt and black pepper, just freshly ground black pepper. Just amazing. Make a simple ingredient so good. So we're going to grind this with a little bit of water. And uh, we, we, have, we have some chickpeas that we, we cooked earlier. And if you have canned chickpeas, you can do it with canned chickpeas, too. Um, I do canned chickpeas at home. Fresh soaked and boiled chickpeas are much better, but sometimes you don't have the time, and it's a great substitute. Uh, so as I said earlier, when you make a spice mix or a sauce, you want to cook it out in oil. So we're going to start this. We're going to cook the spice out a little bit in the oil. Then we're going to add the chickpeas, and we're going to just let this cook. And we're going to add a little bit of tamarind to this. Now, tamarind is an acid. Indian food, I spoke about it earlier, has these, these layers of flavor, and one of them being acid. And in Indian cuisine, depending on where you are from in the country, you would use a different acid. Like on the west coast of India, we use tamarind. So you go down from Gujarat to Bombay to Kerala, uh, Goa, you'd use tamarind. If you go to the north of India, you'd use yogurt, or you'd use, use tomato, or use lime juice. Uh, also on the west coast of India, and sometimes in the north, is use green mango. So use green mango, or use kokum if you're on the west coast again. So it's these acids that we use to build these layers of flavor and to give the food this roundness that Indian cuisine is known for. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit over here and use uh, a puree that we already have that we made of the coconut, the chili pepper, uh, and the tamarind. And uh, I'm going to cook that in a little bit of oil. with the spice. And these recipes are in the book. I'm just winging it right now. But it will taste good. Uh, I hate following recipes. I can't stand following recipes. And when I cook in the restaurant, these guys, my sous chefs follow me around in the kitchen every time I'm changing the menu. And I change my menu pretty frequently. Uh, I, I don't write things down. I just go into, we have a spice room, which is about that little bigger than that table. And I get inspired by the ingredient. I don't get it. I don't have something in my mind. So I'll, you know, in the, in the night, I'll call up and find out what they have. And I say, OK, we have halibut today. So I tell my sous chef, OK, I, you know, just bring me some halibut tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And these guys normally come in at about 12. So from 12 o'clock, they're hounding me. Chef, what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with this? And I honestly don't know. And around 3 o'clock is when I decide, OK, I'm going to change the menu today. I go down, I go into the kitchen, open the walk-in cooler. Or, I, or on Wednesdays is normally when it changes. I go down to the market. I pick up some vegetables. I go in, and then I start cooking. And when I start cooking, I'll tell the cook, OK, get me fish stock, get me tamarind, get me lime juice, get me this, 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 this. this. And this will be all li it'll be lined out on the table behind me. And uh, I start cooking. And half the time, I'll use everything they bought me. And sometimes I 
will change my mind halfway through the cooking. Because with me, it's all about what the inspiration is. It's, it's, and I don't try to you know, put stuff in that doesn't belong, because it's very easy to do that. And then you get food that doesn't make sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's about adding ingredients that make the ingredient taste good. And then after I cook, these guys write down every single thing they do. And I, ha I have a database of over 10,000 recipes. And, and sometimes they'll ask me, Chef, you remember last year we did the snapper? And I have no recollection of it at all. And you know, when I have people over to, they ask me, uh, when they eat in my home, you know, may I have a recipe? And I don't know what the recipe is. So now what I've started doing is that, you know, my wife asks me when I cook dinner, she writes everything I'm doing. And then I, I try to recreate it again, but I, I can't. So you're gonna cook this out a little bit. In the meantime, our cracked wheat is done. And our sauce is looking good. You know, for me, cooking is about having fun. It's, it's about enjoying, enjoying the process of cooking and then enjoying the process of eating because I think if you cook without eating, it's, it's no fun. And if you eat without cooking, it's no fun. So it's, it's about enjoying the company you have and you know, doing things that make you happy. I'm gonna use that. So once this is cooked, we're gonna add our chickpeas to this. And if you have stock, you can add stock to it or you can add water to it. I'm going to add some water right now. Um, what I do at home is I use chicken stock. And you let this cook. Need some more water. easier. And while this is going, I am going to start my lamb. And as I said earlier, you can either grill the lamb or you can, you know, roast it. And don't worry about the, you know, the oil I'm using with the lamb because it's, it's, uh, if you have protein, you can't put fat into protein. You can put fat into carbs, but not into protein. So everything that is on the outside is gonna, is gonna stay on the outside. Anybody have any questions? Um, it's a very good question. I use a bunch of oils. I like to use I like to use canola oil because I feel canola oil has a has a has a perfect smoke point for when you're cooking spices. You don't want your oil to be too hot because if it's too hot, it's going to uh, it's going to burn the spice. And if you have grapeseed oil, a lot of chefs are using grapeseed oil these days. Uh, grapeseed oil has a high of, uh, has a higher smoke point. So you could be heating it up much higher than you wanted to, and you could burn your spice, okay? I like to use olive oil uh, because I think olive oil has a nice fruitiness which adds another layer of flavor to the food. Uh, I do use ghee sometimes, uh, but if I do use ghee, I'll make sure that people know that it's got ghee in it because of the animal, pro animal fat. A lot of vegans who don't like it. Uh, I do use nut oils in the restaurant. I think nut oils are a great flavoring. Uh, but I use, I use them more as finishing. I love peanut oil, but again, because of the allergies, I tend not to use it as much. In my own cooking at home, I use a lot of peanut oil. But I think you could have a bunch of oils and you could choose as many oils as you want, uh, but you gotta be careful on how you use them. Uh, 
So I'm going to season this with salt. And whenever you season with salt, any meat, you want to let it sit for a few minutes, like I'd say five or 10 minutes, because it helps with the crust on the outside. It helps the, the, the salt go into the meat, OK? And when you have a spice crust on the outside, you want to be careful that your pan doesn't get too hot. Uh, you know, sometimes when you do steaks, you want the oil to be really hot so you can sear it. Uh, but if you have the oil too hot for this, you are going to burn the spice and make it bitter. And our sauce is almost done, so I'm going to finish it up with some mint. You know, cooking with spices can be so much of fun and make things so interesting that, you know, most people don't realize that by adding something really, really simple to a dish, uh, it changes the whole complexity of the dish. The other thing that we, we chefs always do is we like to, we like to taste as we cook because you are, you are building flavors in there. And the other thing that you want to put is <clears throat> you want to put a little bit of jaggery or brown sugar you know, to balance out the, uh, the acidity. Now, if this was a bigger piece of meat, I would most definitely put it in the oven. Uh, this, this is pretty small. You can do it stove top if you have to. Um, and there's another thing that we do in the restaurant is when we are cooking a piece of meat or fish, we add a little bit of butter to the pan, and then we baste it. Uh, and, and that helps with the, with the flavor as well as As this cooks, if you know, the longer you let this cook, the more thick it's going to get, the chickpeas. Uh, and you want it nice and thick uh, because it, it just, you know, the fattiness of the chickpeas comes through with the acid and the sweetness and the heat. Another thing we like to do too in the restaurant is we like to add herbs to a pan when we're basting a piece of meat or fish because it just gives it a little fresh flavor. You know, you can do whole garlic, you can do sliced ginger, you can do sliced shallots, you can do spice if you want. But it just makes it make it makes it more interesting. Now I'm gonna kind of rest this for a minute. Uh, and whenever you do roasting meat uh, it's always a good practice to let the meat roast uh, or let the meat rest before you slice it uh, especially if you're eating in medium rare or anything less than that because if you you cook the meat and you go and slice it right away what happens is is with protein as it cooks it tenses up and all the juice from the inside comes to the outside and uh, when you go and slice it you get blood in the plate but as if you rest it and you slice it you get a beautiful pink in the middle, and there's no juice on the plate.
you know, uh, it's, it's, it's also very interesting because uh, if you cook with spices, there are very, very, people, very many people who are very afraid of using spices in their food. And in my restaurant, I get cooks who come in all the time and say, Chef, I don't know how to cook with spices. I said, as long as you know how to cook, I can teach you. And if you learn the basics of you know, fresh spices, using oil, you know, taking care, balance, you know, don't use too much, uh, you can cook very well with spices. If you, you know, I have tasted restaurants where the food has got way too much of chili, or way too much of garam masala, or way too much of something or the other, that's what kills the dish. But if you use it in, in limitation and you, you follow the recipe and you follow the cooking technique, your dish can come out perfectly every single time. You know, there's, there's nothing that's, I mean, you know, what I did today is not what you guys do. It's just not rocket science. It's just follow the recipe. You know, I'm not discovering anything. I'm not doing new web pages or new search engines or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just, just putting food together. And, and it, it's, it's got to start from here because if you don't have the passion, you know, you can, like, I can tell when someone is cooking without passion in my kitchen. If a cook is unhappy, I can see the product coming out. If I can, I can go to someone's home and eat a meal and I can tell you if that meal was cooked with passion or not, or that person had a good day or a bad day, because it translates into the balance of the salt, the balance of the heat. It could be the most simplest dish that they could be making. It doesn't, like when, you know, I have friends who, who like to invite me over to eat and they try to make fancy. And I tell them, don't make fancy, make what's close to your heart because that's going to be good every single time. And if that passion translates into what you do, when you eat it, you get that joy. And with food, that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's not about my ego. It's about the community. It's about making you happy, making you enjoy these wonderful flavors and, and partake of this meal. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and slice this, this lamb right now. I'm just going to plate this. A little bit of lamb. And when that's ready, we'll put it on the plate. It's not right now. Any questions? Uh, thank you for coming. Can you tell us about the stock you're using, and do you cheat with stocks at home? Do I cheat with stocks? Like uh, instant, bullion, anything? Uh, I have two freezers at home. One has ice cream and normal home stuff. And the other one, which is in the garage, has my stocks. And I have, I have chicken stock, I have shellfish stock, I have lamb stock, I have pork stock, I have beef stock, and I have a vegetarian stock. Uh, what I do is I buy whole chickens at home, and I save the scraps, the skin, the necks, the wingtips, and I put them in these small bags. Uh, it drives my wife totally insane when I do that because <laughs> She'll open the freezer one day and all these bags will be everywhere and, you know, once a month I make stock. And I make the stock and I freeze it. Uh, you know, these small quart containers, they're the best. But I think if you do that, uh, I used to at one point buy stocks commercially, but they don't have the body. Uh, you need the gelatin in stocks. Uh, I do use bouillon cubes, uh, but not for everything. My mom makes a rice dish uh, with bouillon cubes, scallions, and tomatoes. And it's absolutely amazing. And I'm not embarrassed to say that I make, I made that rice on Sunday night uh, because it, it tastes pretty good. But making your own stocks, it can be difficult. But if you have space to store like scraps, you know, bones and 
skin, and especially of chicken, or if you have shrimp heads, uh, save them. Uh, it, it just makes a total difference to the way the food tastes. It's, it can be so much better. And in the restaurant, of course, we make, we have a big steam kettle where we make chicken stock every single day. But we don't cheat with, you know, if we say it's vegetarian, it has a vegetable stock in it. We don't put beef stock in anything unless it's beef, or we say that there's beef stock in there. We don't put fish stock or shellfish stock or, or lamb stock or pork stock, for that matter, in any dish that doesn't contain pork. Uh, I just like to respect people's beliefs. question. Um, you said, you know, using fresh spices is good. Do you ever need to saute those spices before you grind them up? Uh, I know my mom does that, and that's one of the reasons I'm, it seems like more of a pain, so I'm wondering if you do that or you just put them in, like there cumin are, seeds and stuff. You can use, you know, there are certain spices that you can use whole, okay? You can use cumin seed whole, you can use uh, black pepper whole, but pull it out. You can use mustard seed whole, um, Black cumin, fennel seed, those you can use whole. Uh, do you need to cook spices? I think you do. There are certain spices that you can use without cooking. Very limited, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon, clove, black pepper, uh, fennel seed can be used uncooked. But you can, you can extract the flavor of spices. You, you need heat for spices uh, to extract the maximum flavor. So you can either A, do what I did, you start it in oil. That's one way you can do it. Or you can dry toast it. Right, that's okay. Right. okay. Or the other thing is you can grind them like I did and cook them in oil. But if you grind them and cook them in oil, then you want to have a liquid with that. And uh, in, in my book, I, I mentioned the you know, best ways to do it. But uh, if you're going to grind it, you want to make sure that you have a liquid to prevent the seed from, from actually burning. Because if your oil is too hot, if you have water in there, you know at, at 212 it's going to evaporate. So you have, it's going to bring the temperature down. Okay, so there are recipes in Indian cuisine where they start off, especially sambars, uh, where they start off with whole spices and they, they kind of toast them in oil with onions and coconut and stuff and then they take that and they grind it. Now in India you have someone with a stone sitting over there grinding it. Uh, if I tell my wife to do that, my bags will be outside the house, you know. But you could use a blender. There is one blender make which is called, what's the one we use at the restaurant? Yeah, it's called Wider Prep, which is a great, Great brand. Uh, every every restaurant kitchen uses it, and in that you can grind spices with the oil. So, if you want that, it costs about I think five hundred bucks, but it's a great blender. Where would you suggest getting fresh, high quality spices in the city? Okay, if if you want to buy spices, what you want to do is, and I'm not going to name any of the big stores because I don't know if they're advertisers on your website or not, but I don't want to get into trouble. But what you want to do is you want to go to an ethnic store. Uh, you want to go to a place that has a fair amount of, say, if you're going to an Indian store, a fair amount of Indians, Pakistanis going in to buy them. Um, Lexington Avenue has a fair amount of stores uh, in New York. Uh, every major city in the country. Uh, I know has an Indian spice store. Uh, uh, in California, in New Jersey, there are plenty of them. In Queens, there are plenty of them. In Manhattan, there are tons of them. And uh, if you see, if you, because if you know that if you're going to these stores, there is turnover and that there are people buying it. Normally what happened in India was with spices that spices grew one time a year. They were harvested once and they were harvested for the whole year till the next year when they grew again and you'd use them for a year. What's happening now is because of packaging and we keep it for a long time and it loses the flavor. So if you go to a store that has high turnover, that's the place to buy it from. You also want to buy small quantities. You know, uh, you can go to Edison, New Jersey, and you can buy one kilo or, t or two and a half pounds of coriander seed. I don't use two and a half pounds of coriander seed in my home, and I cook a lot of Indian food. <laughs> so you can buy it in ounces, you know, one ounce, two ounces. And they're, they're pretty good. Even, you can even buy them online. Uh, there, are, there are tons of places that sell spices online, whole, in small bags, one ounce, two ounces. So that's what I would suggest. And I would not go and buy everything because, you know, if you buy, I've seen people buy half a pound of, of, of like fenugreek. Uh, fenugreek, half a pound, is a lot. 
you use half a pound of fenugreek in anything, you're not going to eat it. It's going to be so bitter. The other, you know, the other spice that I also have in this recipe, which I, I forgot to use, is asafoetida. Uh, it's, it's, it's a gum, and it's used with beans. And I should have put it with the chickpeas, which I didn't. But uh, you buy these containers, which are that big. I have a container that big at home, which lasts me for a year, because you use like an eighth of a teaspoon when you use it. Now, I had a new sous chef in the restaurant who said, I want to buy things in bulk, and he bought six cases of asafoetida, <laughs> which I had to throw away because we could not use them. It was so much. So you, you want to be careful what you buy and how much you buy. Like, you know, the other thing with, uh, if you buy green cardamom, and uh, if, you use, if you grind green cardamom and you get green, green cardamom powder, okay, as soon as you grind green cardamom, it has a half-life of 14 days. So in 14 days, it's going to lose half its flavor. So just think about it. As it stays, when it's ground, you're losing all these wonderful oils that help you. Everybody got everything. Um, so for people who are just starting to cook Indian food, what three ingredients do you think they should add to their cupboard to start? The first three ingredients to buy are cumin, uh, turmeric, and I'd say coriander seed. Because you have these three things you can do. What You could do steaks. Everybody has black, I'm assuming everybody has pepper in the house, everybody has chili flakes in the house, everybody has some amount of cinnamon at home, uh, you know, and bay leaf. So if you have black pepper and coriander, you can make a curry out of it. If you have cumin and turmeric, you can make a curry out of it. You can make, by varying these four spices, you can make like 10 different curries, just playing with the, the volume. But it's, it's, it's about having fun with them. It's, it's not about being intimidated or, you know, it's not rocket science. It's absolutely not. It's, it's easy and fun. And, you know, when I, was, I, when I went to school in Switzerland, I was dying to eat Indian food. But there was no Indian food in Switzerland where I was. I was in Blush, uh, in, in the Valley Mountains. And the only spice they had was that curry spice that they have, which is absolutely nasty and disgusting. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, if you're cooking, don't even go out and buy it because A, you don't know when it was ground, B, you don't know what's in there, and you know it's got some turmeric and it's got some fenugreek because you can smell it, but uh, we had to use that, and it, it's just, you know, if you can make your own spice blend, it's so easy, especially today, you know, you get, get a little spice grinder like that, and you can go anywhere and buy them, so it's, it's not hard, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, you know. I've, I've, made, I've made curries with... Uh, uh, using Bloody Mary mix at 2 o'clock in the morning when I was a bachelor. You know, come back from a night of drinking and you want to eat something and there's no food in the fridge but there's Bloody Mary mix and there's spices and there's potatoes so you make a potato curry and you eat it with rice, you know? Or a chickpea curry with, with Bloody Mary mix. Well, it tastes damn good, you know? <laughs> but it's, 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 it's being creative and using the spice mixes that you have and, you know, as long as you have that, your neighbors are going to complain that you're grinding spice at 2 o'clock in the morning but who cares, you know? You're happy. Oh, thank you. 